my Australian adventure finds me in Townsville on the Queensland coastline and this is the middle of winter. I, I really like this winter. I think, I think I could do this. Lots of beautiful sunshine, a day out at the beach. I'm walking along the strand of Townsville. Absolutely stunning. So I don't actually really know what to title this episode of the Australian vlog because Orpheus was kind of like my last long-term stop and from now on I'm just hopping from place to place so I don't have a title but I am spending two nights in Townsville last night I was here and I'm here for tonight I'm staying at the most incredible backpackers honestly I mean you you pay X amount of money per night and you get really really horrible backpackers and then you get backpackers like this which are just incredible and you're like but why is there such a disparity when the price is the same anyway I'll show you the video of this place they have like the most incredible rooftop pool and bar and the rooms are beautiful it's just stunning uh, called Rambutan in Townsville if you're ever here say that backpack is really good so yeah, I'm in Townsville for two nights and then I'm heading over to Magnetic Island for two nights which I'm really excited about because again that's getting back into nature this is like a little bit of a city stop but next up is back into some hiking some snorkeling hopefully spotting some wild koalas and then after that I'm doing a dive on the Yongala and probably I will also include my sail around the Whitsundays in this episodes so yeah lots of fun adventurous things to look forward to I haven't really had a chance to check in yet. Uh, it's not check-in time, but yeah, this is like sort of the restaurant area behind me. And then over there, all the bedrooms, etc. And look at this, right on the beach. Yeah, this place is pretty awesome. I like backpackers that are on the beach. I have just taken the very crowded bus to get to Jeffrey Bay which is actually a marine protected park you can't do any fishing here or any spear fishing but you can do snorkeling there's a sunken wreck out here apparently very cool snorkel trail <laughs> was actually rather average the visibility was terrible I don't know maybe two three meters there wasn't much coral to see there wasn't much fish to see so probably not worth it however there was one upside and that is that I saw three stingrays so the first one was swimming off as I approached it the second one was kind of he had hidden himself in amongst the sand so I could get really close to him and have a good look at him that was quite cool I think it was a blue spotted ray I'm not too sure the spots it had blue spots on it but the spots didn't look quite right so I'm gonna go double check that and see if it was indeed a blue spotted ray and then the last one was another mangrove whiptail that was hanging out here in the shallows as I walked back so yeah three stingers I think that was pretty good but yeah the snorkel trail as a whole me I probably wouldn't do it again there is also apparently a population of rock wallabies that live around here somewhere so I'm gonna go try find them because I really want to see me some rock wallabies <laughs> little mini kangaroos that hop around so freaking cute um, so they get fed here every day and even though there's a sign up there that says please don't feed because the population has grown quite substantially and there's too many of them now 
But anyway, what can you do? People want to see rock wallabies, so they go and feed rock wallabies. Anyway, cool sighting. I recommend it. Hello everybody. Today is my one full day on Magnetic Island. I have got my walking shoes on and I'm hiking. There are plenty of amazing trails that go around this beautiful island. So I'm going to try get as many done today as possible, see how far my legs will carry me. I have started on the trail that runs from Nelly Bay where I'm staying over to Arcadia which is the next bay. Uh, apparently it's got some really cool lookout points. It's a five kilometer track so not too long but I'm still hoping to do another track or two after that. So pretty out here. Look at this view. I am now branching off from my original track which will go that way to the track which is going to go that way because up that way is another track called the Forts and it's got some really cool World War II memorabilia and a population of wild koalas. So we're going to go koala hunting. <laughs> many koalas around so a mom and her baby chilling up in the tree I just passed a group of people that was crowding around this one and he was on the floor he was totally like walking in amongst everybody chilling out it was so cool to see him awake because all the ones have all the other ones have been asleep so yeah that was really really cool um, got really up close to him which was awesome um, yeah some of the World War II stuff was really cool as well but Nobody cares about World War II stuff, it's all about the koalas today. Next up on the agenda for today, there is a road that leads down from where the Forts Walk started down to a bay called Radical Bay, which is one of the more secluded, sheltered bays. Apparently it's really, really pretty, so I'm going to head out there and just relax on the beach for a bit and put my feet up for a little bit. <laughs> It's a new day today and my body is somewhat tired from my walk yesterday so I have the morning just to chill out <clears throat> I'm gonna spend a bit of time on the beach and then this afternoon I'm taking a ferry and a bus to get to my next stop which is just south of Townsville in an area called Air um, and I'm spending the night there because I'm diving the SS Young Gala tomorrow so looking forward to that <laughs> yesterday on the SS Yongala. Um, mixed experiences. So first of all, it's about a 40-minute 40, 40 boat ride out from Alva Beach to the Yongala and the conditions were pretty rough yesterday. There was quite a big swell, quite a lot of wind, got incredibly seasick. I know it's a bit ironic, a marine biologist that gets seasick, but unfortunately something that ails me. I tried taking medication, but it never really helps. Anyway, got really seasick. <laughs> very rough super cold I mean we woke up yesterday morning we had to be awake already for the dive briefing and stuff at about 7 30 a.m. and it was freezing cold outside I don't know who turned the temperature down but it was really cold and then we had to get into a, a wet wetsuit and that was really cold and then we had to get on the boat and we got soaking wet on the boat because of the big swell and the wind and there was just water coming in everywhere and the wind made you even more cold so freezing cold seasick not a great experience but 
it then turns around as soon as you get into the water oh my goodness honestly the best dive I have ever done in my life it was just spectacular so it's this wreck that sunk in 1902 I think it was it's been down there for a while the reef life on there is just phenomenal the fish life I'm not even exaggerating I saw a fish that was two meters long chilling under the stern of the ship it was a kind of cod um, or grouper groper this fish was I'd never seen anything like it it was it was so so big and just these big schools of fish there was a huge school of barracuda that was hanging around at our safety stop so it was really really awesome saw these huge stingrays as well two big marble rays one huge cowtail ray which is actually the species I work on and there's a cleaning station there so these big rays stingrays just come swimming in and this one cowtail ray was just like swimming above me getting all the cleaner rest to clean it I was just watching there this huge stingray swim over me it was just such a phenomenal experience the diving honestly was fantastic unfortunately I cannot show you any footage because as I was finishing off my second dive, right at the end, I was swimming back to the boat, had my GoPro stick in my hand, looked down at the stick, there was no GoPro attached. I don't know what happened, somehow the pin that held the GoPro to my GoPro stick must have unscrewed, broken, detached itself somehow. So my GoPro was gone along with all my footage, which makes me very sad. But there were other people who were diving with me, so I'm hoping that they are going to send me some of their footage. I gave them my email address, so maybe if they do, I can show you some footage of 